All right, thank you for staying daybreak. We'll come to your feedback in just a bit. Use the hashtag daybreak and this is State of the Nation at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Keep them coming. We're finishing on this issue of taxation before we move on to other things because I see here House team has proposed the, to cap the number of CASs at 22 and also the NADCO report is out there. We'll talk about all that in just a bit. But uh, let me bring in Owen Bayer on this. We were talking about earlier on and Kagusha was mentioning that there's sometimes a difference between populism politics and ignorance of the law. Yeah. What happened in Mount Kenya is related to what we're talking about here. I think there's still more taxation coming through. There still needs to be some sensitization. Farmers are now facing a new living in planned agricultural commodities exchange. You were on record last time we were here saying that the members of parliament who helped chase the KRA officials should not even be called members of parliament. Yes, yes. Have you, <clears throat> as the deputy majority leader, have a conversation with them? And what is the response? Do you still maintain that they shouldn't be members of parliament or were they simply just playing populism politics at a time when talking about taxation? I, I want to latch on that issue of populism t uh, politics because uh, many times uh, politicians and members want to you know, speak, uh, double speak. You come to parliament and I expect a member of parliament when he comes to parliament, he's sane, he has he's, his full capacity to handle the law and the argument, and would himself have his own argument when he votes on or against something. But when he comes to parliament and votes for a certain tax, and you know, uh, voting, or especially when it comes to a law, comes in the committee of the whole, committee of the whole house, where you do what you, you come through, you know, the, the, the law, and therefore you make a conscious decision. You see, there's the vote that is taken the, the, at, at second reading, you know, that everybody will say aye and they say nay, and uh, sometimes that is it at that level. But that does not pass a law, you know. A law is passed at third reading, at the committee of the whole, where it goes close by close, close by close, close by close. And the, the, the chair at that particular time gives every member who wants to speak on that particular clause an opportunity to speak on it. So if you are given that particular clause and you say, I, I am in agreement with it, yeah. and that law passes because you said you are in agreement with it, there is no record in parliament that says that you opposed it. You see, if these guys who are chasing the guys from Mount Kenya had a record in parliament to show that, uh, um, yeah, I voted against this particular clause, the record showing they voted for it. For so it. They then you it. go back to the people and tell them, no, this is not correct. And therefore, I, 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 you, you, you join to chase KRA of, officials. I think as uh, parliamentarians, as members, as politicians, we need to be more honest. You know, there is um, a saying that says that one of the, the, the tenets that you should have as a politician is being principled. We respect Sifuna for his principles. When he stands up, he doesn't double speak. He speaks his mind, you know, and uh, he, 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 he lives by it. But uh, you, it, it is very wrong for this country to continue to have politicians who can double speak on sensitive issues like tax. And then you, you, you speak this in parliament and when you go to, out there. And some of these are very well-educated uh, legislators okay. that are lawyers and, you know, people who have degrees and all that. You know, if people with a low kind of education will say, OK, he didn't even understand what he was passing in parliament. Yeah. But uh, they understand what they're doing in Parliament. So there's no excuse whatsoever. I still believe that if, if I come to Parliament and say yes to something, I should consistently say yes to it because okay. that is what... This is a decision I made that affects people. I have to stand by it, whether okay. painful or not. But if you go out there and you want to seek populism, uh, even Kenyans are aware. Okay. And I, th I think you saw the comments. Yeah. You saw the comments, uh, especially on social media, against these people, okay. especially when they did that. Yeah. They were told, you, 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 you forget about your seat. Okay. So, but, but I also want to <coughs> go into these issues uh, on, on taxation, uh, uh, Trevor. Yeah. You see, this country needs to start to think about uh, the issues of zero rating taxes. And, uh, you know, the finance bill is coming. And this is a conversation that makes, you must, we must continue to have. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to continue with the zero rating regime as a country, or we want to move to... Uh, tax exempt, you know, because when you talk about uh, uh, zero rating, today bread is zero rated. But does that, what does that mean? It means um, the input tax is actually at the end of the day claimed by, uh, by, by producers. Producer. Yeah. So the person who, when you buy two loaves of bread, the person who benefits more is not the consumer. It is the person who produced the bread. Mm. So Jugunandu is saying, okay, so what do we do? If we put it on tax, put red tax, then and move it to 
uh, a tax refund to the consumer. The, the consumer benefits more. You have more value for the money that you get. Yeah. But today, if you buy bread, you benefit more uh, uh, the, the consumer, uh, yeah, the, the, the producer. Consumer. And this we need to look at. Okay. Uh, t at uh, when you go to tax exempt, tax exempt, everybody benefits at the end of the day. Okay. And therefore, we have a more, uh, you know, there's this um, saying that everybody must pay his fair share of uh, taxes. Okay. But there are many producers out there in this country. Yeah. Uh, and especially when um, Sifuna has been in parliament now a second time, and uh, he understands every time you have, uh, you have uh, tax, the tax bill coming in and the tax uh, coming in, you know what happens. Uh, uh, I know he's, 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 so it's his first time. He's actually a junior uh, to me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so what happened? <laughs> so I want to give a few things yeah. about taxation. You see, when taxes are, uh, uh, the finance bill comes to parliament, yeah. a lot of producers will be hovering around parliament to say, you know, we want, we would like you to move this to, to, to zero rate. So they lobby so for amendment. They lobby. And many actually manufacturers lobby. actually come out to want to lobby so that a lot of the produce, the products are yeah. zero rated. When they're zero rated, they benefit. They make billions of shillings. Today, the tax refunds, in fact, we were here where we said, is it over 300 billion shillings, or how much it is, that is being claimed by, by traders? Okay, for tax exempt, they are telling government pay us this money, pay us yeah. this money because of tax exemption. So even the the administration of tax in this country, yeah. when you move to zero rating, becomes very expensive okay. because all the processes, the processes that lead us to somebody getting a refund on his tax, becomes very expensive for okay. government. Right. So we need to look at what do we do as a country. <clears throat> the yeah. proposal that uh, Jogun and is saying there, which uh, uh, my, my friend uh, Sifuna is trying to read, is that. That, uh, uh, we need. To, it, it says there in the last second to last paragraph in the nation, yeah. where he says that we need to relook at the whole thing. How much does government lose mm -hmm. when it comes to zero-rated products like bread, like milk, uh, uh, where ninety-five percent of the claims in yeah. this country goes tax refund goes at, actually to okay. bread and milk. Let, let me bring in so we need this. to yeah. look at it. And uh, Sifuna needs to be very honest. He yeah. needs to look at taxation from okay. an expert point of view okay. and not as a politician. Right. And uh, he's here to if, answer it. Uh, let me yeah. hear from Sifuna. Uh, I, I have never heard anywhere that he's a tax lawyer, okay. so he might so, uh, be capacitated. Yeah, allow, okay. allow me to speak. <laughs> yes, Sifuna. Allow me to speak. I have, I have never claimed uh, yeah. uh, to be a tax expert. Yeah. But Owen Bayer cannot lecture me about honesty. Yeah. You have put a very simple question to these two gentlemen here this morning. Yeah. If this proposal comes to the floor of the House, will you vote for it or no? They should give you a simple answer. It shows you the dishonesty. I have heard members of parliament, uh, Trevor, argue against a bill during debate. And I'll give the clearest example. Unfortunately, my friend Harwale is not here. When we were debating the water bill, he actually stood up and he said, it is time we need to push back against these unconstitutional uh, bills that are coming to the Senate, bills that are taking back uh, devolved functions or clawing back on devolution. At the point of voting, Halwale voted for that bill. And it happens with this gentleman. What Kagushia will not tell you, I had proposed uh, some time on this show, that when it comes to voting on critical uh, bills like finances or like taxation, if you want to tax the avocado farm, let that vote be taken in Mukuruini, not here in Nairobi. Because when he's here, he feels very safe. The, he, what he's calling uh, populist politics, you are a representative of the people. I remember asking, are you sure that the people of your constitution uh, or your constituency want this bill to be passed in the manner that it is. And they said yes, because they want roads and so on and so forth. The, on the ground, it's different. Because I speak to members of parliament, even from the region. One of them is a very close friend of mine. And she said her mother has one avocado tree. One. She's been selling this. And it produces avocados maybe once or twice a year. And that is what she knows. She's being told that she needs to register on items for this one avocado tree so that she can sell her horticulture. This is the implication of a vote you took. It is not populism for you to get to the ground and then realize that you did not represent your people. You represented your boss, the president who told you you must pass this bill. This constitution, uh, Trevor, requires me as an elected legislator to, number one, consider debate then pass a law you must consider it i'll give you the example uh, we are talking about bread here did these two gentlemen for instance consider 
the implications of passing the Sugar Act in the manner in which they passed it. The Sugar Act is currently before the Senate. These two gentlemen passed a law that imposes a 4% tax on imported sugar, industrial sugar. Industrial sugar is what is used in producing of bread. When they passed it, did they consider the implication on the prices of bread? Did they consider the prices, uh, the implication, the prices of confectionaries, everything that is used in production, uh, su industrial sugar is used in production, including beverages, including confectionaries, all of those things, there's going to be a cost implication. When Owen Bayer argues about against input VAT and manufacturers claiming, you should also listen to the manufacturers themselves who are telling you that if they are able to claim back the input VAT, that benefit is passed to them. <coughs> Uh, to, to the consumer, and that in fact, if they are not able to pay, uh, to claim that input VAT, it will be claimed directly from the consumer. There is that argument as well. So let us not be hypocritical. The truth of the matter is, the members of parliament of the majority side. First of all, Trevor, you saw us as the minority side in the Senate complaining that debate has been stifled. Parliament is a house of debate because Kenyans want to know. What is your position on this avocado tax and why are you supporting it? You must be able to explain to the public. When you're speaking in parliament, you're not just addressing your colleagues or the speaker. You are addressing your constituents for them to understand why you're supporting a particular position. And we have uh, seen a very big uh, clawback on that debating space in parliament because... The dishonesty is there. People know that this is something that is unpopular. They don't want to be seen on TV yeah. actually supporting it. Number two, they don't have any justification for why they are supporting certain proposals and why they are opposing it. So I'll give you an example. He has said that at the third stage of reading, uh, the chair of uh, the committee of the whole allows debate. At least maybe it happens in the National Assembly. In the Senate, it doesn't happen. We had a big fight when we were trying, well, during uh, the third reading of this housing, uh, affordable housing bill. These are common sense proposals that were put on the table by the members of the minority. Yeah. Senator Okongo Mogeni proposed that, for instance, we exempt people who have a subsisting mortgage from this levy. That you, a person who is, uh, uh, only has uh, five years remaining to statutory retirement, should be exempt. That somebody who is aged over 50 years and is engaged in informal business activities should be exempt. They did not allow debate on this. In fact, during the second reading, would you believe it, on an important bill like this, we were limited to four minutes to debate a bill like this. And Trevor, let me tell you where the problem is. One of the leaders told me, uh, Sifuna, you know, uh, we are gifted differently. There are people who can debate for 20 minutes, there are others who cannot, and uh, we should try and shield those ones who cannot debate. And I was asking myself, <laughs> you chose a job that involves debating. <laughs> that is the description. That's the job description. Yeah. If you know you cannot, why don't you be an accountant somewhere who just sits and inputs numbers in a, in, in a computer? Yeah. You chose parliament. You cannot uh, inconvenience those of us who have things to say because we represent uh, a larger number of people. In fact, the largest housing projects, uh, Trevor, are being undertaken in Nairobi. Okay. And the people speaking about it, you will hear some uh, members of parliament from some places where I know for a fact there are no houses going to be built. Yeah. They are the ones hogging all the space and they don't want the senator from Nairobi to debate and actually lay the problem on the table from all the people that I represent. So the dishonesty yeah. is not on our part. I have never claimed to be a tax export, expert, but I am an honest member of parliament. <laughs> you can ask me today yeah. if this bill comes to the floor of the house. How will I vote? I can tell you now I will vote no. And I have the reasons because Kenyans are overburdened. All these taxes, and by the way, uh, uh, Honorable Bayer, you guys should be able to tell your party leaders the truth. Yeah. Because you see, I see this debate even in these uh, matters of the AU, they're saying, oh, now Raila is gone, there will be no opposition for uh, Ruto in 2022. Ruto's 2027. opponent, 2027. Ruto's yeah. opponent in 2027 are not in the leadership. They are in those people you lied to about creating jobs. They are the people on, in well, this think, middle uh, class uh, that you have uh, imposed all. No, no, let, no, 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 let, let me finish. Trevor, Trevor, let me finish. This is you one will speak. It's two against one. You will speak. Those people you have levied SHIF, yeah. those people you have added VAT on fuel to, all those people that you want to pay housing levy, those are the biggest opponents of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration in 2027. Any person, any Kenyan, 
will beat Ruto. Because in 2027, <laughs> these Kenyans who are talking to us are telling us they are not going to look for a clever mouth. They are not looking for the smartest politician. They are not looking for the one with the most money. They are looking for somebody with empathy that you can actually listen to the people. If the avocado farmers are telling you that our industry now, the one tree that I have, there is no justification for you to levy this tax on me, you should be able to listen to them. So when you see these proposals coming, yeah. it is not as if Ruto is deaf. He knows that the people are suffering. They have cried in his ear. He is just a person who has no empathy, and he doesn't care what you think. He will impose bread, uh, tax on bread. The, the milk one, I can assure you, Trevor, it is coming. The tax on oxygen is coming in the next few years. You know, you know, you know. And, we, and then we look at the housing, the debate on the Senate, I'll come to that in just a bit. I believe we have some of the clips on the housing levy because that one passed. The housing bill passed on both the National Assembly and the Senate. So we'll talk about that shortly, yes. You know, uh, f first I want to advise my brother here. The issue of um, uh, honesty. Yeah. He should wait for us to talk about honesty. Why? And uh, you, you, you know, it's sometimes it's also good not to blow your own trumpet too much. It's good also to allow others also see you in that manner other than just blow your own trumpet. And listen to me, my brother. Are you going to blow my trumpet? <laughs> I, I, I am going to tell you as it is. So you are as dishonest <laughs> as it comes. Sure, sure as uh, You are as, as dishonest as it comes. Yes. You know, <laughs> Sifuna says, uh, that uh, we we passed a law to tax in, uh, import of sugar at four percent, and he asks, he says we are dishonest, and that we don't want to discuss that in public. We want to talk about it hiding because we don't want Kenyans to see us talk about taxation. First, the issue of taxation is not an issue to be uh, afraid about. It's not anything to be embarrassed about. Uh, I remember one time when uh, President Kibaki was addressing the public, he said that. I'm very happy uh, that you are now paying four times the uh, taxes of what you used to pay before. In other words, what we are he was trying to say is that we used to collect 250 million before, and now we are collecting one trillion uh, as, a, as a government. And, and, and Kibaki would say, I am happy. We are collecting four times now. And Kibaki would proudly talk about it in public and say, uh, and I want to encourage you that we are going to pay more. Because the issue of taxation is not anything to be, to be demonized. And demonizing taxation is as dishonest as Sifuna is trying to put it. Saying that we have imposed a 4% tax and now we should be embarrassed about that on import sugar, and now we should be embarrassed about that, I, I, I think that is a, the, the most dishonest I say uh, remark that you can sugar. get. Are you getting You don't think there's a problem. Imported you know, white you know, sugar. There's you a know, distinction you know, in Bushia. Yeah. You know, Sifuna. Yeah. One of the reasons, and maybe you also need to explain to you some of these things that uh, uh, I, I know you are not in Kenya Kwanza governments, and so you may not buy into the Kenya Kwanza's plan. But the issue is, one of the Kenya Kwanza's plan is to lower any, any import that we get to this country. And uh, one of the things that the government has done, really, is to introduce various taxes targeted mm -hmm. to discourage imports. And, and, and then introduce other aspects to be able to encourage production. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the things that the government has done is to introduce an import tax on most of those things, like sugar. The government has introduced a tax. But on this other side, what is the government doing about it? The government, in that same law, yeah, the Sugar Act that my brother is talking about, has also introduced uh, various measures to encourage farmers to be able to produce uh, sugar in this country. One of the things that has been introduced in that, uh, in that act yeah. is, uh, I mean, not even in the act, one of the uh, things that the government has done is uh, to propose to write off 100 plus billion Kenya shillings in terms of uh, debt that has bedeviled the sugar farmers. And once you have freed the sugar farmers from uh, debts which have been there for ages, what you're meaning is that now whatever collection that you have from the sugar farmers, I mean, whatever revenue they raise is, is going directly into their pocket now, other than paying those uh, debts. The other thing that the government is doing, and I think this is what we need to focus on. Yeah. I, I, as we're talking about taxation, we also need to ask ourselves, what is it as a government must do to ensure that we encourage production? And one of the things that has, has been done is to give subsidies to the farmers. Are you getting? Mm -hmm. And also to create infrastructure that is going to support uh, the same farmer to farm 
and also to be able to take their produce to the market. Okay. And also when they take it to, to, to a market, to find a market that is existing somewhere. So, for example, uh, you have uh, a sugar cane farmer or even a coffee farmer who is getting a subsidized fertilizer in their factory. As we talk now, of course, I know the Mukurini people will know that that has not happened in terms of uh, the, uh, the coffee f uh, fertilizer. It had not gone last year, but the other fertilizer went. Uh, but of course, we have races with the government and it has now been procured and it will be available at the, at the factory. Now, if you, produce, if you, if you provide this uh, fertilizer to the coffee farmer at the factory level, mm -hmm. and then you're also going to make the road uh, from the factory uh, to the market. And then the Minister of Agriculture is also going to ensure that the farmer is able to uh, get better prices for their product. That farmer, even if, even if yeah. they were to be taxed and they still take home much more than what they would have taken before, that farmer will tell you, tax me. Why? <laughs> because if you lower my cost of production to a very low level, and then you provide me a market. And, and really, this is also a challenge to our, our CS agriculture and our CS cooperatives and trade. I mean, if this person is going to sell, like, like for example, if for a coffee, a kilo of coffee, yeah. you're going to uh, produce it now at 60 shillings lower than how you produced it before. And then you're going to sell it at a 60 shillings more, the more, more than what you sold before. Mm -hmm. What problem? will a farmer have with paying a little money back to government to support the subsidy program that was done, to support the infrastructural arrangement yeah. that was done. And I mean, the, the farmer will have no problem. And that is exactly okay. what is happening. If you look, for example, at uh, the coffee reforms that have happened yeah. around the coffee sector, you find that now farmers are going to be uh, reaping mm -hmm. much more than they did before, okay. you know, per right. kilo of their coffee. All right. If that farmer is asked to part with a few cents to be able to support that program, I am telling you, because what is remaining in the pocket of the farmer is much more yeah. than what they were having before, that farmer will happily be able to support that program. Okay. And, so, uh, and, so, uh, and so, and so, and so, and so, I mean, just, just I mean, I mean yeah. we, we can't, okay. we can't continue demonizing. Yes. Yeah. We can't I'll continue demonizing. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, this is the last comment. Yeah. We I'll cannot we minute. cannot continue demonizing yeah. taxation. Okay. We cannot continue demonizing contribution of public to the same same structures yeah. that are going to support them. Are you getting? And claim to be honest. Okay. In well, fact, let, we are not only dishonest, but we are also extremely hypocritical. Okay. Yeah, One let, minute. Let, so that let me tell you because this, this is the evidence else. that yes. uh, Kagusia did not consider the sugar bill. Yeah. I spoke about industrial sugar. There is no single factory in Kenya that produces white industrial sugar. I'm not talking about table sugar. And you have spoken like somebody who did not read the bill. So no. the industry... No, 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 no. You, no, but, but you, know, you can't say I did not read it. I have it. You, 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 No, 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 no. I have you listened see, to you. You see, you see. I have listened to you. But Trevor, I let, let, I have no, listened to you. No, you have let listened me to me, but you, I cannot let also me allow Sifuna to, yeah. to, 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 to belittle. Okay. I get it. You can't also allow him to belittle our point. You are here. You see, the process in which we are producing, you know, but no, I will respond. But also, but also, you know, you don't belittle. Uh, my Fine. point. You will respond. I get it. Yeah. Right but okay. as he is so, also so making his point, you know, we can't me, also allow belittle because you, the, process the, the process in which we are producing the table sugar is a process in which you are producing the industrial sugar. Yes. Are you getting? Right so let him let him say what he's saying. I am not the one chance. making your yes. points little. They are little points. I am telling you, my brother, that I spoke about no, industrial sugar. Industrial sugar is the one that is. Trevor, let us agree on this. No, but let us agree on this, Trevor. You know, we are live on show. Uh, you know, <laughs> my brother Sifuna, you can't make it a point of belittling other members of parliament. Are you getting? Eh, because are you done? You, you, know, you know, it's good to also be respectful. Okay. Are you getting? To each Agreed. other. As we we must have are you done? Decorum, are you getting? Yes. Are you done? Because, because I did we don't not, come here for not, insults. Okay. We yes. don't come here for insults. And we don't come here with small points, okay. like my brother. Fine. Are but you, you getting? Let, let him explain. And you know, having a big head doesn't mean that you have a big point. That's okay. fine. Are you yes. getting? But the point... Explain. If a point is little, everybody can see it's a little point. It's not me belittling it, Kagushia. I spoke about industrial sugar. Do you know the distinction between white industrial sugar and sugar 
That's the point I'm making. Because if you read the bill, you would not have imposed 4% on industrial sugar that is not produced anywhere in this country, that is used in industry. I would understand if you impose an uh, importation tax on sugar, table sugar, because... But, he, but he's, also protect, yeah, means, he's also ignorant. He's also ignorant of the I industry finish. that is being set up now to can produce that industrial yeah, sugar. Let me finish. Let me finish. Then I'll, I'll have Owen buy as well. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're displaying yeah, ignorance. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. You're displaying you, ignorance. You will, get your, opportunity. Oh. You will get your opportunity to be able to uh, uh, highlight yeah. my <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> uh, after I'm finished exposing your littleness, let you will expose my hypocrisy or my ignorance. It's already I am clear telling you that yes. you're ignorant about okay. the plans that the government is putting on the Don't Are you getting it? Just relax. Just relax. Where to Leah to? I am saying you passed a law without considering it. And it's not the only law. It's many laws. You are telling us stories here about, oh, coffee. I asked a very simple question. Did you consider the sugar bill and its implications on industry and the prices of things that uh, uh, it is a key ingredient in, including bread? In my view, you did not consider it. Because at the Senate, we are going to propose certain amendments, Trevor, to exempt that tax until local industry has the capacity to produce white industrial sugar. You understand what I'm saying? So when I tell you that you did not consider the bill, you are showing it here that you actually did not consider the bill. And members of parliament are re required to read and understand what they are passing. In my experience in the Senate, and I've said this, most members do not want to consider bills. Because consideration of bills does not happen during voting. It is a three-step process. First, you consider, then debate, explain to the people why you are supporting a certain proposal or why you're not supporting a certain proposal. So all of these things that we are saying, when a farmer receives a benefit, that benefit should remain with the farmer. You are not receiving a benefit so that you can pay higher taxes. If you have reduced my cost of production, yes, I may remain with extra coins in the pocket, but the purpose of the subsidy or the, 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 the benefit you conferred as government or the reduction in the cost of production was not so that I can be in a position to pay more taxes. Which are these farmers you speak to? Because the farmers that I speak to would want to benefit from that subsidy okay. by improving their lives. If somebody was uh, cultivating an acre where of does, land... Where does the government get the money to subsidize? Let me finish. Hold on. If not let from me taxes. Let me finish. If you give with the left hand and take to the right, with the right hand, you have not done anything in terms of changing the lives of those farmers. You want to grow their capacity. If somebody was producing an acre of land, because they have extra money in their pockets, let them produce two acres. If they were renting ten acres of land, they can be able in the next uh, harvest season or planting season to plant 20 acres. The benefit must remain with the farmer if it is a true benefit. So there is no farmer, at least not the ones that I know, maybe the ones in uh, Mukuruini. The ones I know want that if you bring a program to aid them, if you have brought a program to lower the cost of production, that benefit should remain with me. You cannot come to tell me that now you need to pay more taxes. This is why your logic most of the time doesn't make sense. And when it is pointed out, so, so, you become so, hysterical. So where does the money, you become where, emotional. No, but where does the money, where does the money, to, where, where does the money to, to subsidize be. the farmer come from? Be. That is where does the government should, get that money that to subsidize a farmer us. from? That's what you should You know, tell this is what I'm saying. It is honest, Trevor. No, where does the money, no, but, 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 you know, but, 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 but Trevor, finish this where does the government get, get no, no, money no, no, to no. subsidize said, the farmer from? Take over. I, I yes. want to say this. You see, the more Sifuna talks about uh, taxation, the more he exposes that uh, he knows very little about it. And uh, I would like to educate him a little bit about taxation. He can educate me about being a lawyer, but I want to educate him a little bit about taxation. And he's honest, baby. And uh, I want to say <laughs> this. You know, uh, Sifuna needs to know, you know, there's people who make their beds and don't want to sleep on them. You know, they make a bed and sleep on another place. That is what he's trying to do. But I want to say this. One. I sleep in my bed. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Whose bed, who's bed do I sleep? So, uh, I'm lost. Uh, you know, now you are an expert in bed and where I sleep. You know, we have a saying in my language. It says, Pale anapotandika, siyo anapolala. So nilitandika wapi? I want to show you. Pale anapotandika, pale hulali. Now, I want to show him this. That uh, you see... He says in taxation, when you t give with one hand, 
I want the left and take the right. Yeah. You have done nothing. You know he doesn't understand that. Taxation sometimes is used to spur growth of industry and the growth of new industry. So when he talks about industrial sugar, 4% on the industrial sugar. Yes, we passed that law, 4% on industrial sugar. Aware that when we start taxing uh, importation of industrial sugar, we are also saying that if you produce locally industrial sugar, it will be cheaper. For the, for, 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 for the country. And therefore, we are saying we are imposing a 4%. We didn't impose 16%. We said we are imposing 4% to try and invite other people, those people, instead of us paying more money outside there because we are losing on our, we are losing on, on our foreign exchange, you know, we are losing a lot of things in importing uh, industrial sugar. So what we need to do, impose a 4% tax, but give an opportunity and, uh, and, and a good environment, concessions, for someone who wants to set up a plant to produce industrial sugar in the country, such that in future, bread will be cheaper. And that is the concept. <laughs> so when you say that uh, government uh, gives with the left hand and takes with the right hand, there is a gap. What do we want to do with the gap? The gap is we want to grow the local industry in the production of industrial sugar. Okay. Now, that is one. Two, uh, Sifuna talks about um, max taxation as if it's not constitutional. Taxation is very constitutional. And he is a teetotaler of the, uh, I don't know whether I use the right word, but he is a person who believes in the constitution. Taxation is constitutional. Tax measures come to parliament because it is constitutional that they must come to parliament for to be debated so that what is passed is passed by the representatives of the people. The majority will have their way and uh, will have their way, and the minority like him will have their say. He should be contented with having his say, okay. you know, at that level. So what I want to, to, to say is this, taxation is not a constitution, it is constitutional. Okay. The question that we must come to is this, is this a good tax measure? In which front? The taxation could be to discourage the production of a certain product, or to encourage the production of another product. Taxation could also mean that, okay, we need to develop our country in a certain way. We have a problem, and uh, you know, Sifuna has always been talking about uh, the, the big debt, you know, that this country is, um, is facing. And I like his criticism when he criticizes government on that, because we are doing something to reduce the, t the, the burden on, on, on debt uh, yeah. by looking at local r sources of revenue. We are not just taxing, we are looking at what are the available local resources? What are the available? When we go into agriculture, uh, Trevor, I can tell you there is a guy out there, you work for citizen and you're heavily taxed uh, by government. But there's a guy there who probably earns three million shillings a month as a, a, as a, a, a farmer, but pays no tax. But the taxation law says fair taxation. Yeah. You know, are we being fair? When we tax you, you tax me, but a farmer out there who makes a ton of three, four, five million is not taxed. Are we being fair? The avocado farmer out there who makes uh, 10 million shillings a year or a month and he's not being taxed, are we being fair? We're not being fair. Okay. So we need to look at, you see, the housing levy yeah. bill ex exposed something. When it went to court, it says yeah. that why are we only taxing people who are employed, even those that are not employed and have an income, yeah. should be uh, tax. Okay. So we, we need also to, 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 to go beyond when you say farmers should not be taxed. But I, I, there's a guy who's a farmer. They have fa friends who are farmers. Okay. They uh, raise chicken and all that and they make more money than I do. But I will pay tax for their roads, for their water, for their everything, but they will take their cool two million shillings and spend it on their families and on their own. But here I am paying taxes. So fair administration of tax is a constitutional aspect that okay. must be obeyed. All right. Again, I want to, if you allow me to just uh, finish a, a thing which uh, Sifuna says here. Um, and I want to, you know, I have more experience than him in parliament. <laughs> I, I want to say this. <laughs> when he talks about stifling of debate yeah. in Senate, and they come crying fall here on, on I, I was in uh, other st TV station and I had a senator saying the same thing. I come here and uh, uh, Sifuna with all his uh, uh, trappings t talks about stifling of debate. Let me remind him that there was a time when Moi was the big guy in this country. And there was only James Orengo, there was only Mashengo Machofi, there was uh, uh, even the current speaker of the National Assembly. There were only 10 people in parliament, only 10 people in parliament. And even that time, uh, parliament was not as independent as it is now. 
because it was being controlled from state house. But they would hold the government to account. Only 10 people would hold government to account under whatever circumstances because they use the, t the tools available for debate. You know, you know, Sifuna thinks that... So they're not working hard enough. Yes, I want to, t to educate him a little bit. Yeah. You see, when he is in parliament, he thinks the only way to make his point in parliament is for him to be given four minutes or ten minutes by the speaker. He goes, he runs, he talks, he says this and this, and he thinks he's representing the people. That is not representation. Representation means you use the tools available within parliament and the tools, even without parliament, to be able to express your opinion and present <laughs> your people. And I tell him this. So you don't think you know, there's tuffling of debate? Uh, no, no. <laughs> they they accuse Senate. the speaker oh, because they are not using the oh, tools. Okay. You know, in the U.S. Uh, which, the, the, tool? which tool would uh, you let, use to make let, sure let me tell him. Yeah. Let me tell him. You see, yeah. in, in, in the U.S., uh, the, the longest um, uh, 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 member has spoken is 18 hours mm. on the floor. 18 hours, even when uh, there is only 20 minutes available to him. But he has used the tools available to him. So which tools to Which tool I'm, is that? I'm yes. coming to educate yes. him. Give us, give um, us the education. Uh, Atendo Molo is a good debater in parliament, and he knows the tools available to him. When he knows he cannot speak for the time that he wants to speak, he will go around and bring a, 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 a constitutional issue. And constitutional issues must be given precedence in parliament to be had. You know, and he brings a point of order there. And he stands there to speak for 30 minutes. And he talks about it in such a way that he can stop debate to ask the, the speaker to bring uh, uh, a ruling on the issue. He never asked the speaker to bring a ruling on the constitutionality of the housing levy. Okay. Uh, in the, when the report to parliament, when the report came to parliament or to senate, yeah. I did not see an, uh, 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 what is the, the, you know, there's the, the main report and then there's a report of the minority. Mm -hmm. If they think that this is not correct, that is another tool you can use. It there is, uh, there. The, the standing orders of the senate gives a senator a lot of latitude to control debate. It is how strong you are, how sharp you are, okay. how brave you are to ensure. Well, in the last parliament, I want to make this, the last parliament in, uh, in the nice National Assembly, yeah. Uh, 12th Parliament. We were there. And when uh, Uhuru had done whatever he had done and uh, brought in the handshake government, we were left only around seven of us. Myself, Duale, Kimani Chungwa, Dinti Nyoro, and two other people. And we could stop the passing of a clause in a bill. I remember we even went through Parliament up to on Christmas time. We went up to one o'clock. How many were we? We were very few people. We didn't even have numbers, but we controlled debate. Okay. Even when the speaker would, the speakers here would rule adversely against us, okay. but we held 40. Okay, speaking that of debate, what, let's, let's play some of the that conversations that, that happened are able uh, to do. in I want the Senate on this housing levy, because it's all about the debate. Parliament don't ever okay. talk about let's play that. Let's, let's play part of that, Ibrahim. This is what they call miseducation. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 